Thank you so much for checking out this free video. If you don't mind, please click like and subscribe. Then we had Brian Danielson and Jack Perry. So before this match started, a bunch of security dudes just start sprinting backstage. And so everybody is asking, like, what happened, what happened? So what happened was, apparently, there was some incident with one of the wrestlers who was not on this show. They were shooting something backstage. And this wrestler and a production guy got into a big thing. And some people have said it's, like, absolutely nothing. But, like, it was big enough that security sprinted backstage. But I was told that, like, whatever it was, they apparently talked it out and everything ended up okay. But that's why everybody was sprinting backstage. But it was right before this match started. And then the match itself, Brian Danielson, Jack Perry. It was great. And Brian, Brian, Brian Danielson can't have a bad match unless he's hurt. And it's just impossible. Well, this was quite great. And it was Jack Perry in Chicago, so he got a lot of heat. There were Crimea River chants. At one point, he got uh, a butterfly suplex off the apron of the floor, and the Chicago fans chanted, you deserved it. <laughs> that's pretty good. And uh, every time he would get heat, they would just boo because it's CM Punk's town and he's Jack Perry. Although there were people trying to get CM Punk chants started and they got booed down by the live yeah. crowd. And, and also, there were people who cheered Jack Perry, too, at certain points in the match. Yes. Um, it was, you know, it's, it's an AEW crowd. Like, it's not really, like, they're just, they're there to see... You know, if you get if you do cool stuff, they're gonna like you. You know what I mean? But I mean, Brian Danielson was certainly the favorite, but and I don't think I think the the they overcame something very um, which which also kind of killed the Monet and Hikaru Shida match is that literally nobody in the building thought that Hikaru Shida was beating Mercedes Monet, so those, those near falls didn't mean anything. And in this one, nobody believed Jack Perry was going to win, but. They did such a good job that they were okay with some of those near falls anyway. But but it, it never had that, like what what um, like what had like what Will Ospreay and and Pac had in the sense of, which I don't think anybody thought Pac would win. But I guess the match was so great. But whatever it was, it was never. I never got the impression the crowd really believed Jack would win, but the crowd absolutely knew that they were seeing a great match and they appreciated that much of it. So we got the ref bump, and of course the Elite came down to hit the ring, and Claudio and Wheeler chase them backstage, and Jack wakes up the ref, hits a running knee, but Brian kicks out to a giant pop, and then Brian hits a running knee of his own, they brawl on their knees, Jack slaps him a couple times, Brian fires up, they have a striking battle, and then finally Brian hits another running knee, Jack kicks out of that, Brian kicks his head in, and ba uh, Jack basically just begged him to hit one more, and he did, and he pinned him. It was a great match. And then they did the angle where Kill Switch comes out and he lays out Danielson. And him and Jack Perry have a stare down. But then Christian's music hits. And he has a Money in the Bank contract, essentially. And so he's walking down. He's going to cash in on Danielson. But there's John Moxley standing in his way. And the place goes nuts. They're chanting Moxley's name. Claudio Wheeler and Pac show up and... Christian and the Patriarchy back off, and the BCC get in the ring, and Brian's so happy, and he hugs him. And then all of a sudden, Claudio Castagnoli clobbers Brian from behind. Hits him with the uppercut. Pac grabs Wheeler to keep him back. Moxley grabs a plastic bag, wraps it around Brian's head. The crowd is chanting, this is murder, <laughs> which in fact it is. None of these referees come out to help this poor bloke, so they uh, pretty much leave him for dead. The new BCC is Moxley, Claudio, Pac, and Marina. And the medical team hits the ring to give Brian oxygen, selling it like he's dead. And uh, that was a split I did not see coming, and I didn't see it coming on this day. Yeah, so this is... Well, I definitely saw the way that they were walking around that Moxley was going to turn. I did not expect the other guys to turn. Um, so anyway, the, we, got, we got an issue with the trios championship because Yuta did not turn. Yuta was crying, trying to save Danielson the whole time. So Yuta and Danielson are still together, and then Pack Moxley, yeah. So they're 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 the new group um, or the old group. And I mean, the one thing now is is Danielson has got so many contenders. He's got Christian. He's got uh, Darby Allen. Um, you know. He, well, here's the thing. He's technically, got, technically, he's got Claudio, Claudio, and Moxley. Christian can challenge for anybody at any time. He could wait a year if he wanted to. Yeah. With Darby, 
I think I've now figured this out based on the last couple of weeks of TV. Moxley wants to talk to Darby because I think he wants Darby to give him that title shot against Danielson. Which he wouldn't do. But, yeah, I, I think you're right. So I could see them having a match where the winner gets Danielson, something of that nature. Well, if that's the case, but, but Dar- Darby has to get the shot, though. I think Darby needs to get a shot at some point. Yeah, he has to. And, you know, Darby was there for Sting's retirement match. Mm-hmm. So, like, whoever beats Danielson, that's like the end of Danielson's full-time career. So you could have Darby beat him, or... That was, that was, that, that was absolutely an idea. Well, the other idea is Moxley wins the title shot from Darby... Moxley beats Danielson for the title, and, then and Darby, Darby ultimately beats Moxley for the you title. Could, you could because do that Moxley too. has beaten Darby many times. You could do that. You absolutely so could do that. I think yeah. there's. I think that's how this is all fitting together. But I guess we'll find out. But this was a great angle. Yeah. The, so the, Moxley's been wanting to do the plastic bag thing for a while. I guess you know. I mean, it, Terry Funk is one of his heroes, and. This angle, you know, I mean, this this is an angle. Terry Funk did this with Ric Flair in 1989, and it was in 1989. The, um, I guess, the feeling of realism of pro wrestling was far stronger than it is now. I mean, now you just do wacky stuff. Nobody believes that they burned down somebody's house. Nobody believes it, but you willingly take it in and did a draw. Yes, it's true. So it it worked. So that's that's cool. Um, and his business, you know, I mean, business is way better than 1989. So, you know, I mean, it's not like, you know, the the more realism is necessarily a, you know, I I, I would personally, to me, I like it better that way. But it's not like what what's going on now is is failing because it's not. But you could say AEW is is down. But I mean, what AEW is doing that I've just described is in WWE all the time, and WWE certainly isn't failing. I mean, they're doing they're doing their best business in two decades. Um, but the deal the deal with um, that when that happened, um, that was a real bad situation because there were so many complaints about that angle, and they made Terry Funk go on television to apologize. And believe me, this guy, he's hes about to wrestle Ric Flair. He's a heel. And he thinks that he's done, you know, Terry's a creative guy. And he did a lot of angles that were out of the box. And this was one of them. And he thought all the commotion was a good thing. And then they basically forced him, you know, if you do not, re- you know, if you don't apologize, you're fired, essentially. So he had to go on TV and apologize. The lead heel having to apologize. And boy, I mean, if you could imagine Terry Funk, he was not happy at all about having to do that. Like today, are they going to make Moxley apologize? No. Are people going to get upset and flood the switchboards because they just saw, you know, somebody do that? You know, it's like cause the whole thing is built on the idea of, you know, you tell your kids, you know, don't ever put a plastic bag over your head because you can suffocate, and you do that angle based on that. And I know, I am sure that there were people who saw this angle that were were not happy, but it's nothing like in 1989 when they did this angle where a lot of people were not happy, and it was not a, you know, ended up not being a success at all. But, um, you know, they've been wanting to do it, and you can you can get away with it now, obviously, unless unless I, you know. Well, it's God damn, station. you can get away with it. You see this main event? Chimney Christmas, which you can get away with nowadays. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.